Hi, have you ever thought of how you perceive relationships? Have you even considered the definition of what you believe relationships to be? Does your response to leadership stem from the relationships or lack there lack thereof that you currently have with those that are in leadership? Hello, my name is Destiny Kilgore and today I will be discussing with you the importance of relationships and leaderships and how they impact our everyday lives. This is the leadership quality and I want to deep dive straight into it. The purpose of this presentation is to explore how building and maintaining relationships impact leadership effectiveness. When you consider credibility, this is an attribute that is closely connected to leaders who lead and they lead well. So the importance of relationships plays into our both our personal and professional lives because who we trust we allow to lead and that's who we follow and those who we do not trust we give more um, static and more pushback on what they have to say no matter how long they have been in position. This is an area where many leaders fail or fail themselves and their team because they lack empathy they lack communication skills they lack listening but they're holding the title of leadership in order to be an effective leader you must build upon relationships whether that's your constant current team or whether that's um those that are in leadership or even those who are your colleagues and they don't report to you relationships are vital because without relationships how can you build on a path of success so with relationships the takeaway should be relationship relationships are a connection or bond between individuals and with that relationship it stems to different attributes in our lives so whether that's professional settings or personal settings, relationships are intertwined and they come into play. And building on that relationships helps to gain sustainability in work environments because when you have a true and honest relationship, you're more likely to give feedback, you're more likely to receive feedback, and you're more likely to trust those who hold leadership roles. So let's talk effective communication and its role in relationships and its role in leadership. Effective communication involves being able to listen, learn, and communicate well. Oftentimes people mess up by thinking that effective communication is a one-way street and it in fact is not. It is a two-way street and with effective communication, it incorporates listening as well. And when we say listening, I don't mean listening just to respond, but listening, retaining the information, and then responding in the the conversation space effectively um, and intentionally. So many of us can tell the difference when someone we're in relationship with or someone that we are having a relationship with professionally when they are listening to us on the defense and when they're listening to us to actually hear and understand what we're relaying to them. And the same can be say, said for us listening to them as well. Effective communication can make or break in a relationship because when someone feels that they're not considered and their voice is not being heard and that you're only listening to them to respond they are more likely to shut down and go into a little nutshell and not want to communicate whether that's verbally or written communication this also can determine your morale on your team when you as a leader are not effectively communicating to your team, they start feeding off of that. And with that relationship, you start to break away little bits and pieces that ultimately destroy the relationship. And they also play a part in the downfall in your leadership role. Many confuse communication to be one way, as I mentioned, and it's actually not. Leaders must Listen to those that are on their team and those who are in leadership with them. So this can be their colleagues, their coworkers, and being able to understand that they hold a different relationship than those who may report to them, but it is a still a valid relationship. And then being able to actively listen, as I mentioned, because many are listening, but they are in fact listening to respond. And with that, you're able to build trust and express concerns um, and your team members are able to express their concerns to you and know that you're actually listening. 
So here we have team building and it plays a vital role as mentioned in relationships. Relationships, they have an S on the end for the reason for a reason. Relationships are meant to be between either two people, either between multiple people being co-workers, um, one who's in leadership, and being able to be basically across a round table. And so team building is a process of working together to achieve common goals. This involves collaboration efforts and environments that foster innovation and creative problem solving. So with an effective team, you are more likely to get a lot of feedback, but also a lot of solutions to existing problems and also people who are more likely to fight to put those fires out and help ease or alleviate your pain in the workday. Um, and they're, they're more they're less resistant to that attribute. And then team building is important in relationships. So there remains a balance between the connection. So it's not a one person putting in 100% all the time with team building. Sometimes you only have 20% and your other team member will have that 80% to meet you. And that's a part of relationships. Understanding who you're working with, understanding who you're communicating with, and understanding who's among your team. And then also being able to respect one another because that goes into relationships, that goes into trust, also team building and communication. Respect is vital um, and it's an important piece that many might miss um, in translation um, of trying to just get across their viewpoint. But having a balance, having respect for one another is vital to the success of your team, but also to the success of fostering positive and long lasting relationships. So to close up, I wanna mention again that relationships are not one sided and that should be a great takeaway that also, although your opinion is valid, also are the opinions and others within your team, but also within leadership. So it's not one sided, it is a give and take and sometimes it is a take. But there has to be that balance to offset. If you have 20% today, you might have 80% next week and someone else can take the back seat and deliver 20%. So effective leadership is not about focusing on the interests of one individual and one individual's goal, but instead to be focused on guiding others and teaching them to lead the path in their new connections. So this means that Although they're in a role where they report to you as a leader, what you're teaching them now should set them up for success in their next role, in their next placement, in their next relationship. Relationships foster an environment for success when ego is not the foundation, but instead trust, open minds, and result-driven actions are on the forefront. So take a moment after this presentation to think about a relationship you have with a team member, maybe a friend, maybe a family member. Identify one thing you can do to strengthen that relationship and then have a conversation maybe to reflect with that individual. I hope you learned something here today about effective leadership, but also mainly about fostering positive and mutually beneficial relationships, both professionally and personally. Again, my name is Destiny Kilgore, and I have had a blast reporting to you on relationships.